song and then play it. But first, tell us about how you got that guitar. Well, about 30 something years ago, I was in a bar we was playing down at the Alpine called the Holy Road. Oh, for Brutus. And uh, yeah, we was playing down there making music and my kin folks heard James Coleman, he told me, he said, let me sell you that guitar. And I said, well, I said, buddy, I said, I can't afford it. And he said, you might can. So he said, uh, I'll take $200 for it. And I said, I'll, I'll buy it. So anyway, uh, I told him, I said, I'll buy it on one condition. I said, you put it in that guitar case there and, and close it up and get me another one to play. And I said, I'll play with you, boys. But I said, I'm not playing it in this bar. Yeah. That's because it get tore up. So anyway, he... Anyway, he put it in the case, and we sat there and we played it. And, and here a while back, went down there and they changed it into a church house. I got right with the Lord and I played it in the bar, and I played it in a church house too. So it, it changed from a Perfect. bar to a church house. So it all worked out real good. <laughs> I'm telling you, the Lord worked it all out. That's fabulous. I'm going to hit you down on one of them play a traveling light. Well, I'm taking a trip. Tried to have a good time. We never did get I out know, and uh, I know. try to whoop nobody or start no trouble or nothing. But Lord have mercy, man. More of a lover than a fighter. I tell you what. I uh, heard you were a fighter. Uh, yeah. Well, I tell you, <laughs> that was part of it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> I went to town one day. They had a warrant on me and stuff, and I went down there. And they come and arrested me, and I got out, and got into a little stuff, and they come and arrested me. So I went down there and they fingerprinted me and, uh, and and let me go, you know, I made mine. Okay, so I got got back up here on the mountain and stopped up at Reynolds, got me a 42 answer, you know. Sat down there behind the old building, sat down there just mad and no wet hand, drinking it, and drunk all that 42 answer. Well, throw, throw the bottle away, 
come in here and eat me about two bites of beans and a piece of cornbread, started eating cornbread and they'd be back out in the yard again. And I walked out the door, but and I mean, I was exploding in, you know, I, they done rested me once and I was exploding. And two old guys come in here with the arms beating them, stuck that dope pipe over and I said, <coughs> I said, uh, we got in a warrant for you. I said, you ain't got no warrant for me. I said, I had a company down there. About 30, 40 minutes ago, and he said, yeah, we said, we got another warrant for you. And I said, I looked at both of them, you know, and I said, I'm going to tell you one thing. I said, I'm going to go with you. This time, I said, I just come from down there, they done had a warrant on me, went down there and made bond, and here you are 15 minutes later back up in my yard. <clears throat> and I said, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I said, I'm going to walk out here and get in the back of your car right now. But I said, the next time, if you come off over this hill right here, and, and me just come from down there with a warrant on me, I said, they're going to be the awfulest bloodbath on 244 Taze Lane that you have ever seen in your life. And buddy, <laughs> that happened with my life. Had been back. Haven't That's the last trip to jail, right there. You just have to talk to them in a rational manner. It took three of them to carry my guns out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet they didn't get them all. No, they didn't. <laughs> but that's been that's the old Roy. Yeah, yeah. You're the new. You're a better boy yeah. now. Yeah. And this sounds something just about like me. I stood in the courtroom, the judge turned my way, looked like you're guilty, now what do you say? Said, Your Honor, I have no story about that uh, you know my mom been going to church for years and years and years been praying for me and all that and, and she had an aneurysm mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we took her to the hospital and uh, and uh, got down there to Leviston and they sent her to Knoxville and she'd been praying for me for a long time and I told her I said mom I'm on my way down there they flew her down there and uh, anyway we got down there at Knoxville I told her I said I ain't gonna never leave you I was the only kid they got mm -hmm. I said, I ain't gonna leave you till your last dying breath. And, and uh, about, um, I don't know how long I stayed down there. I thought, well, they kept telling me, she, you know, I know she was going. <clears throat> My dad hadn't been dead about three or four years. Mm -hmm. And I went through that. And uh, so something told me, said, let's go home. Mm -hmm. So get yourself out of there, man. Mm -hmm. So I come to the house here, me and my uncle did, and I come up through the basement and unlock the doors. 
walked in here and I told him I looked at my uncle and I said, I smell death all over his place. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, that's where it's so half been shut up so long. And I said, no, that ain't what it is. So anyway, he left and when he did, I got my bedroom in there. I went in there and got my old shotgun and put me a double lock buckshot, laid it down every side of it. What were you thinking? And, <clears throat> and he left. So anyway, uh, when he left, I, was, I thought, well, my dad's dead, my mom's dead, and I ain't got no, I ain't got no use being here no way. So I walked in there at the door and, and I put my hands up on the door like that right there, and I looked at that shotgun, that double lock buckshot. And you can believe it or not, it's just like you standing right there at that door. Something said, you need to pray. I mean loud, just like on a big microphone. Really? And that just shocked me, you know, and I thought, well, who in the world is that? So I walked out of there and come here, and, and there wasn't nobody in here, and looked outside, there wasn't nobody nowhere. <clears throat> and uh, I stood there at the door a minute and just kept thinking and thinking, and directly I started right back again. You know, I said, well, I'm going, I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to get yeah. myself out of this mess. Yeah. So I started back again and said that again. And buddy, when it did, I knelt, it was cheer right over there. And it just seemed like uh, a magnet or something drawing me down. And I, I just went right down on my knees, buddy, and, and give my life to the Lord and come back, buddy. And I mean, it, it was just, you know, I hated the dirt I was walking on. And, and when I got up. Everything was just like a bed of roses, son, and I said, well, <laughs> if I know it's been like this, I've been this way a long time ago. Well, I look to the door, what I think, coming for to carry me home, it's a band of angels coming after me, coming for to carry me home, drinking, quit drugs, quit everything, you know, quit smoking, cigarettes. That's crazy. Yeah, that's amazing, good. man. I'm proud of you. I, I mean, the good Lord, I, I sit here, stood, slept on this couch, I guess, about three or four months, and I went some withdrawals, buddy, if you wouldn't believe, and uh, yeah. every time I, it was just like, uh, I was, I'd ring and wet with sweat. I mean, you could squeeze water in my shirt, and, and, and all at once, it's like you stuck me in deep freeze. <coughs> well, I went through that and I'd roll off and I'd start praying to the good Lord. I'd say, Lord, now I need your help. I need it bad. And 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 I I roll I slept about three or four months like it right there, man. I mean I, I just I just all in a big mess. If I was a gambler, I'd tell you what I'd do. I'd bet on
I always told my mom them I, ever since I was a young boy, uh, I either go I'm either gonna either gonna die, somebody gonna kill me, or I'm gonna end up in the penitentiary for the rest of my day. Yeah. I mean that, that was that was my life, that was my trail. Well you gotta walk Long so badly You gotta go I'm gonna sing uh, this uh, "Will the Circle Be Unbroken," and I guess we'll close her, <laughs> close her out <laughs> for a while. Well, I was standing by my window on a cold and cloudy day when I saw that curse of
like that song there about John the Baptist. You know, my mom there, you know, passed away, and she's always wanted me to get right with the Lord. And I hit, it hit there, and that song there, Circle Be Unbroken. You know, that's, my, that's, that's about, a, about your mother going, you know. Oh, it is? You're, I don't care. I don't care who it is. If 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 somebody's here and say, your mama's going to go in five minutes, you're never prepared. 